Uh, well, it, well, it's a good, it's, it's, it's a good, um, it's a good documentary, basically, um, and, and we learned somewhat from it and was reminded of things to wash your brain, but let's just begin this off right, right here, because we're looking for this particular, um, this particular quote, um, sometimes we, we will get a little rusty, but we have to actually, it's like an athlete. Athlete may be good in a certain competition, but always has to stay, um, always has to stay, stay fit. You know, that's one thing we always have to kind of seek to, to, to stay fit. Is actually Tito, Titus three and um, Titus three and 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 five. Now the video that we're speaking of hasn't become available yet, but the working title for the video is actually called Wash Your Wash Your Brain um, What Mind Control in Hollywood or something like that. Something to deal with mind control and and, and and Hollywood. Now when we look scripturally and biblically and let's clear this let's clear this for for a moment so we can put something something new up here. All right. Let's clear this because this is from a former a former um lecture. Um okay. So I'm from a lecture. Uh, all right, right there. Okay, um now they call that documentary Wash Your Wash Your Brain. And it's a good documentary. Uh, admittedly, we'll say it's a it's a it's a useful documentary, but really it's about wash right wash your mind right wash your mind not so much just about washing your your brain cuz see the brain the brain is um the organ in the body but it's the mind that relates to the soul the suke the feeling and thought we spend some time on the whole zeitgeist, what we call the zeitgeist, NWO conspiracy, because um, we do um, realize now by study that something is shady, it is pale and very shady about that. People will say it opened up their eyes. Well, that's the same thing as the serpent in the garden um, promised to so-called open up their eyes. And, and it seemed that way to Eve, and, and Adam willy-nilly went along with that. And that's the situation for the lost sheep, the black sheep of the Beta Israel in this present, in this present time. Um, but now, let us go to, let us begin this off right with the scriptures and, 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 with, and with the word. Um, a couple of scriptures, and this is spiritual. This will be under the category of a a spiritual. Let's use a new mark. A spiritual baptism. There's a couple of brothers and sisters who actually asked about um, baptism, and if we haven't answered that you directly, then perhaps this particular teaching is a, a more detailed approach to, to answering that. That baptism, first of all, is, is, is trifold. What do we mean by baptism being trifold? Well, it, it has three parts. Baptism has three parts to it. And when we look at the, the English word, baptize, is from a, the Greek, um, baptizo. Baptizo. Baptizo means to immerse. Not to sprinkle with water, as is done in many um, counterfeit Christian rituals. They'll sprinkle you with some water. But in truth, it means to immerse. Remember what Christ said himself, our black Lord and Savior. He said that ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, 
nor the power of God. And it's also been said by his apostle that we must study and show ourselves approved. And the master himself has said we must be born again from above. And his apostle says do not be conformed to the world, to the spirit of the age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So there must be a regeneration, a renewal of the mind which is of the kind and in alignment with the founder of the firm, in other words, with our black Lord and Savior, with the black Messiah, with Jesus Christ, with Yeshua HaMoshiach. So that means according to the Bible, when properly interpreted, because the, the proper interpretation is important to act on. In other words, you must get a, the, the object lesson when one is studying class, you study, but then, you need to understand it in its proper context in order that now when you experiment or you put it into effect, it won't, as they say, blow up, in other words, in your face. You understand that you have to put it in the proper context. You understand? And this is where modern so-called whitewashed Christianity has done an awful job. And there's a lot of sincere people out there who are, who are still struggling with it. And hopefully some of the truth that is being presented perhaps for them for the first time by these teachings will be helpful. And this is not, some people will think we're saying black Lord in order to get back at the, at the white Jesus or whatever. No, we, we're saying that to put it into proper context again because we cannot ignore and say it does not matter what race he was when the Bible continually talks about the race as the seed. And there is a particular seed. And he says there's signs that will accompany this seed. So when we look at the lost sheep or the black, the black people, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, we recognize them as the lost sheep of the Beta Israel according to the biblical signs and the biblical indications. Everything from the byword, the nigger word, to being the byword, um, to their whole history and the the curses for disobedience, when we look at every other people, every other race, the only race that perfectly fulfills the bill is the so-called black people, the niggers, Negroes that don't know themselves as Beta Israel. So that means that the Lord and Savior himself and his mother, the black Madonna, and her child is our black Messiah. And men and people have, have waged war and are waging war to stop the rise of the black messiah. This means that black liberation, if properly understood, is not just about black people, but it's important for that seed to be redeemed in order for humanity to be saved. So this is this is very important. This this is universal. And we need to understand. So now baptism comes in three as 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 is threefold. Baptism, scripturally speaking, biblically speaking, is threefold. Now, according to our black Lord Jesus or Yeshua, how important is baptism? Well, Jesus, Jesus, Yeshua, he answered, Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom, into the kingdom of God. Now, God is the truth, and the truth is God. Now, see, this is not to oversimplify it, but let us understand that says that instead of swearing, you understand, by God, they will swear by the truth. And this is prophetic. This is in the book of Yeshayahu or, or Isaiah the prophet, you understand, says that in that day and time, instead of saying, like, by, in the name of God or by God, they will say by truth to show us that God is the truth in its most abstract and essential metaphysical aspect. This does not mean that we ignore his incarnation or manifestation in and through the black seed, you know what I'm saying, and not through Caesar's Christ or the whitewashed Jesus, but it means that what is essential now when you get past that, you know what I'm saying? When you get past that, you have to wash your mind because if you still have that blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus in your mind, and many of us honestly have to admit that even years after we started to, to recognize some of the facts concerning the racial identity of Jesus Christ, 
Sometimes, as someone said, Jesus, the first thing you think about if you ask yourself, what's the first thing you see? You'll still see flashes. That's part of that mind control for 400 plus years. That's a byproduct of the PTSD, the post traumatic slave disorder, you know, saying among the lost sheep, especially. But other peoples in the human family are also susceptible. In other words, if the lost sheep are lost, then all of humanity is lost. So we have to understand what God meant about that particular chosen people. And it's that black people who were that chosen people who went astray. And part of the, the byproduct for their rebellion is slavery. This is what we meant when we said that slavery was good for our people. Some people didn't understand what that meant, but it was good for us. You know what I'm saying? Because it showed that there is a righteous God, a righteous judge who judge in the affairs of men and people, and in particular in the affairs of we as we the black people. So this is a part of our divine heritage. So baptism, it says right here, by water, man must be born by water. This is how we're all born by that when that water breaks in our mother's womb. And by spirit. Now spirit is that regeneration. That regeneration, he that believeth or admits as the truth and is baptized shall be saved. But he who does not admit the truth is damned already. Now, these are quotes from John chapter 3, verse 5, and Mark chapter 16 and 16. Now, what we want to bring forward to your attention is, because the teaching on baptism is much more than just that particular word there, but as we look into, say, Matthew, I'll add to that Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, and Acts of the Apostle chapter 1, verse 5, because he shows um, baptism, baptism by water, by spirit, and by fire. So once again, we see that that is threefold, that is trifold, and we'll go through the explanation um, of what that means based on the scripture, but what is important we find at this particular point is to touch on two particular scriptures that relate to our subject matter at hand, and that's wash your mind, spiritual baptism. And these two main scriptures are Ephesians 5 and 5 and is that 16, Ephesians 5 and actually 26. 5 and 26, and, and Tito, or Titus, 3 and 5. So let's put this up here. Ephesians 5 and 26, and Tito, or Titus, um, 3 and 5. 3 and 5. Now, let, let us touch on what these verses say. Okay, um, let's go to Ephesians first, Ephesians 5 and 26, and let us deal with the main quote, and then we'll put it into, into context. It says, that he might sanctify, that means make us educe, holy, and holy means to be set apart for God's use, for his glory, to be set apart for God, to be set apart for the truth that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, with the washing of water by the word. Now, when we put this into context, it's speaking of the, the walk of the mitmanon, or, or the faithful, the one who has our main as, 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 as the object and have imnet, Faith within and the Amen or or Yeshua HaMoshiach, Christ as that object, the Amen, according to Revelation three and and fourteen, we find that our Black Lord and Savior is the true Amen, and that is His true name. In ancient Egypt, they called Him the Hidden One. You understand? And the Bible says, "You are a God who hides yourself." It seems like the truth is somewhat hidden. But it's, it's basically revealed what is hidden from people is this world or this unreality of this, this world that has, been, that has been painted and created <clears throat> to replace the true world. That's why Christ would say, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not of this world system. Now, 
when we get to the inner we get to the inner life of the spirit filled believer right where it speaks about speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord they're even seeking to take our music as reggae music try to post up some bob marley music or use some music from bob marley in your in your video and see if it gets through maybe yours will get through many of us our videos have not gotten through and they tell us because umg they own the rights to it and if it does get through it might not play in germany it might not play in the united states and you have to ask yourself what is behind that? Well, zeitgeist and poltergeist are both German words. You understand that refers to ghosts and not spirit. So the ghost said something meant to excite or to frighten or to angry one when you look at the etymological root of that word. So we live in a very exciting time, they say, a very frightening time and a very angry time. This is a very angry time as, as well. People have lost the balance in their minds, right, which is affecting their brains, but first it begins at the mind. Giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here it's speaking about the married life of the spirit-filled believer, the mitmanon, as illustrating Christ and the church, illustrating the black Messiah and the community of those who admit and believe in the black messiah the true son of god it says submitting yourselves one to another they say in the fear of god but we have to understand that the fear of god is not like the so-called fear of the demons and the and, and the fear in its worldly sense see the fear of god is in a reverential sense and and the fear of god is coupled with a hatred of evil it's like when his majesty speaks and say um, to make one's will obedience to good influences and to avoid evil is to show the what greatest wisdom in order to follow this aim one must be guided by religion or hymenot living faith so the war even with zeitgeist and with Albert Pike and the rest of the Luciferians and Satanists is presently against religion especially the Judeo-Christian religion, whether it's Judaism, in fact, the Jews are about to, white Jews and black Jews, really, are about to go through a, a, a hell of a time. Um, Christians, you know, those who are believing Christians, whether it's in the white so-called Jesus or the, the true black Messiah, are about to also go through a terrible time. On some level, you can say the Mohammedans and the Muslims have already been going through a terrible time, but there's more to this. While we see they're under attack, religious folks are under attack, we see a rise in Satanism and demonism coming into the so-called public square and being accepted as an alternative religion. It began actually with Ronald Wilson Reagan and the Church of Satan in about 1966 in California. That's actually when it, it, it began more or less here on earth, but it's it's increased ever since then. Now it says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. So therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, the church is subjective, in other words, to Christ, so let or make the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Now, one thing that's very clear in the day and age we're in, and a lot of the sisters who might be watching are saying, that's not the way it is now. Well, you're right, that's not the way it is now. This is a part of the zeitgeist or the spirit of the age. This is all a part of the mystery of iniquity. Husbands, love your wives. We find that, that's not, that, that those are not the standards of society. It's, it's, this is a new normal. We're in a new normal. That means you'll find that it's directly opposite than what we have here in the Scripture, in the Word of Truth. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ so loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, cleanse the church with the what washing of water by the word. In other words, when you read it in its better um, translations, in fact, 
there's a good translation in this recovery Bible that we had talked about before. Let's let us uh, uh, share this this translation with you, and you might see how the translation is um, not just more accurate, but it helps to convey inaccuracy helps to convey the the central idea of this. Verse 26 says that he might wash, that he might sanctify her. Notice they don't say it. See, this is one of the areas of King James where they degendered the divine genders. That's why men and women really are having so much problem, um, not just communicating, but being who they were created to be as one, as one. That he might sanctify her, cleansing her by the washing of the water in the word, by the washing of the water in the word. Now you notice how that's that's um much um much different much different than what we have in the English. First of all it clarifies it clarifies her. You understand her while the King James has has it. So this this conspiracy was long time. They knew it was her but still they translated it. Now here verses twenty five and 26 are connected. So we're going to go through this right here, Bamarinya, in the Metaf Kedus of Negus and Neges, or the Book of the Seven Seals of Halas Alasi Authorized Bible. And here in um, verse uh, 26, 25 and 26, it says, Balo Tori, Christos Dagmo, Beta Christianin in the Wedadat. Mr. Chachuhuna would they do? But Wuha Metat Ebina Kurt Alugara Ana Anisato and the Yaked Satisil Erswara Sunasal for Sete. Now, the part about washing, right? Let's, let, let's get to King James again. King James seems to see it that it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. It with the washing of water by the word. Here in the recovery Bible says that he might sanctify her, cleansing her by the washing of the water in the word. In other words, this metaphysically speaking is purifying, washing your mind by studying and applying the truth of the word spiritually. This is what it means by being born again, born again from above. You understand? It is a process. Bamarinya in the Amharic it says, Bewucha in water, Metat Ebina, washing, washing in water, Kalugar Anitsito, and with his word, with his word, um, cleansing. Cleansing with his word. We cleanse our mind state with the word by studying the word and, and learning what the truth is. And that process of retaining this word and retaining this truth helps us in overcoming what the, the Jews would call the Jezer or the Yitzer Hora, the Yitzer Hara. In other words, the inclination that every human being has, the inclination to evil, and part of that is, a, is the generational curse that humanity has from that parabolical first transgression and disobedience that the Garden of Eden is a, a, a parable, you understand, to explain that like Christ gave parables, you understand, and then he explained the actual. He said, well, that's a parable there, but this is actually what I mean by this parable. When he's explaining the mishtir or the mysteries, the mystery of the kingdom or the secrets of the kingdom. So there's many secrets in the Bible. The Bible speaks about the, the mystery of God and Christ, and the Bible speaks about the mystery of iniquity as, as two opposite and polar so-called mysteries. Both of them are mysteries. Both of them are secrets. There's, there's a secret school, you can say, to both of them. You understand? However, the reality is right here in front of us. Some of us, many of us, cannot see that, you understand, until 
until we are made sighted and until the blindness is taken from us. Now, when people say that their eyes have been opened, you, you see, by certain things, true, the eyes can be opened, but it's really those eyes, according to Christ, that must become one. See, it's those eyes, those two, that become one. It's the, unless your eye be singular, is what our master says. Now, some may now look at the dollar bill and see that single eye and say, this is what it's talking about. He's speaking to us metaphysically. Remember what we've been saying about the physical. The physical is a base or a foundation, but we have to rise above that. What Christ was talking to Nicodemus about is the very same principle. What we're speaking about here of spiritual baptism is the very same thing that is being spoken. So one has to be able to understand spiritually. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand the, the abstract. For example, nobody doubts their breath although they've never seen their breath. They don't doubt that it, that it exists. In the same sense, this reality has to be as close to them as their very own breath, because in, in fact, it is the true breath of not just temporal life, but eternal life, because the soul itself breathes. Also, it breathes as well. Now, the continuation of this is as indeed edesat, indeed edesat, in the words, to make her holy, to make her set apart. To be holy is not like they tell you in their whitewashed Christianity. In fact, one of the main process of, of regeneration, being born again, is that you begin to understand such things um, that have been foisted on you, such lies out there in religion and Christian, and you have to actually put this out of you. You actually have to understand to deny to deny that because now what you understand is understand the truth about it and how it was part of the so-called proverbial wool being pulled over most of our eyes. Now that's the first area right there, right? That's that's the first verse right there, Ephesians five and six. Now the recovery Bible has this little footnote and we want to share it for you because we think it's very important in understanding and really overstanding spiritual baptism. First of all, it says that Christ's purpose in giving himself up for the church is to sanctify her or to make her kiddus, to make her set apart, you know, exclusive for the master. This is why a lot of the churches we see today are caught up in more pleasing the worldly standards or the worldly baal, the worldly husband, you know, instead of Christos and his word in spirit and truth. And this is one of the apostasies that we see in this end-time um, church age, the end-time church age. But Christ's purpose in giving himself up for the church is to sanctify her, not only separating her to himself, which, which literally is what sanctify and make holy is, to set something apart, to be set apart to the master, to himself, from everything common from everything in the Latin sense, vulgar, you understand, and even much that is popular, you understand, but see, now everybody has a mind control to want to be popular, you understand, but there's a separation of everything from everything common, but also, even with the separation, there is a saturating her, there's an immensing her, and, and now we take the role of this, that sense, her, meta physically, metaphorically, as the collective community, as the true bride, you understand, of the black Messiah, of Christ and his kingly character. So there's a, there's a separation on one hand, and there's a saturation with his element, with his element that she may be his counterpart, that we as a community would be a counterpart, and this is our divine heritage. He accomplishes this by cleansing her by the washing of the water in the word, by a washing of the water in the word. Now, there's a symbolic sense here because when it speaks of the washing, it's referring in the Old Testament and the tabernacle sense of the laver, what's known as the laver or the wash basin. Now, in Greek, the definite article is used before this word, 
causing it to refer to the laver. The lava was known to all of the Hebrews, to all of the Beta Israel, in other words, to all of the Jews, black and otherwise. In the Old Testament, the priests, the Kahinat or the Kohenim, they used the lava to wash away their earthly defilement. In other words, they used the wash basin to wash away their earthly defilement, according to Exodus chapter 30, verses 18 to 21. Now the laver is the washing of water, washes us in the same way from defilement. So the Old Testament type is very important. This is why we study Torah. You understand? Because the Old Testament type is very important because when Christ says, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God, we have to ask of what scriptures was Christ talking about? Christ wasn't speaking about any one of these New Testament books. But we have this to refer us to the foundation. And it's interesting that, that the the book of Enoch, the Ethiopic book of Enoch and Jubilees and Adam and Eve and the Kibbutz and the Guess is all reflected by this true first century church. This is before the mystery of iniquity crept in and the Antichrist took over the church and then put the counterfeit Christian image and the counterfeit Christianity. Now, according to the divine concept, water here refers to the flowing life of God. Now, according to the divine concept and idea, the water that we're referring to is not just the, the common so-called water, but it's using a hieroglyphic type, an example, a parabolic type. Now, this water now is the flowing, just like natural water flows, but this spiritual water is the flowing life of truth or the life of the true God which is typified by flowing water. We have examples from Exodus chapter 17, verse 6, 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, John chapter 7, verse 38 to 39, Revelation chapter 21, verses 6, and Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and verse 17. Now, the washing of the water here is different from the washing of the redeemed blood of Christos. Now, this is a whole other area that we're going to have to address, but it is a key thing that the notes in the recovery version of the Bible, if you can still get it, biblesforamerica.org, um, is very, very good. Because it's showing us that the washing of the water here is different from the washing of the redeeming blood of HaMoshiach. The redeeming blood washes away our chatiyat, our missing of the mark that's called sins. First Corinthians, uh, First John, excuse me, one and seven, Revelation seven and fourteen. Whereas the washing of life washes away the blemishes of the natural life of our old man or our old human so-called person or personality such as the, quote, spot or wrinkle or any such thing that's mentioned in the next verse, verse 27. In separating and sanctifying the church or the Beta Christian, the house of the Christ ones or anointed ones, in separating and sanctifying the church, and let me just put this up here as, as, a, as a visual, the separating is like this. And the sanctifying is like this. And therefore, we can see in, in a, an iconic way or a symbolic way, it is like the cross. Because one part separates, right, and one part sanctifies. One part separates and the one part sanctifies. So this symbol that you see, they might put it in a circle and they say, oh, that belonged to the New World Order. They are trying to take the symbols even from people. That means re rework or, or, or put their own definitions to these symbols. And see, magicians do that. Magicians say, you see this? What is it like? This is like a bird, right? It's a bird, right? Okay, it's a bird. Because you put it in your head, it's a bird. And, and who knows? It might be a bird. It might be a rat. It might be a, a rabbit. Who knows what it is? But part of that is to 
to enforce his own meanings on this. So when he does his trick, you'll be like, wow. So you have to understand that the same thing you do with these symbols. So no symbol is inherently so-called good or evil. They have what they call spiritually apps. There are spiritual apps in this spiritual HD world, in this high definition, high definition. That means you have to go beyond just the common connotative definition that the, the ignorant masses, the mob, understands it. But it says here that in separating and sanctifying the church, Adonai, or the Lord, if you please, Gita, he first washes away our sins with his blood, with his blood, and blood is a symbol for life. Blood is a symbol for life, Hebrews 13 and 12. And then washes away our natural blemishes with his life or his way of life as we learn and grow and start to live his way. And according to his testimony, then our natural blemishes get washed away in living his life. We are now in such a washing process. When we speak about spiritual baptism, we're in a washing process process that the church or the community, the community or the society may be holy, kedus, and without blemish, in ken yalela, yalela bet or yalela bat, verse 27. Now, lastly on this, the Greek word denotes instant word. When we say kalu, kalu gara. We're talking about the instant or what's known in Christianity as the rhema. A rhema word is a right now word, an instant word. This is what Christos uses, and this is what he teaches his Chudek Amezamur, the instant word. It's the indwelling Christ, the Ethiopic Christ, the Tawahido Christ, the indwelling Christ where man is restored to his his, his original relationship with God, his Father, God, our Father, in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. So this indwelling Christos or anointed as the life-giving spirit is always speaking. The life-giving spirit is always speaking an instant, present, living word to metabolically cleanse away the old, and replace it with the hadith, or the adis, the new, causing an inward transformation. So when we're speaking about tawahido, the, the, the rita haimano, this is what we're speaking about. It's all verified by the word when the word is properly understood and when it's properly taught and when it's properly revealed through manifestation and through emare, emare, or demonstration. The cleansing by the washing of the water of life is in the word of Christ. It's in the word of Christ. This is how we wash our minds, in the word of Christ and his kingly character. This indicates that in the word of Christos, the Moshiach, or the anointed, there is the water of life. This is typified by the laver and the position of the lava when we study the tabernacle. The, ta the lava was situated on the wash basin between the altar, between the altar where the sacrifice is, and the tabernacle, or between the cross, we could say, and the tabernacle, in that, or the foot of the cross, the brazen feet of the cross, the altar and the tabernacle, according to Exodus 38, and 8, and Exodus 40, and 7.